are you able to see my screen okay. till now we completed the basic of networks then we discussed about cisco ios then we implement routing in routing we implemented static route default route and dynamic routing in the dynamic routing we implemented rip eigrp and ospf today i will give you some task you have to show me you are comfortable with the labs now next is switching we already discuss about router let discuss what are the differences between router and switch no <clears throat> router router is a layer 3 device it can understand only ip address router create routing table it forward the packet based on the destination address by default uh yes support unicast if any traffic is going uh, broadcast and multicast that traffic will be drop on the router by default if you want to allow the broadcast in that case specifically you have to allow that traffic we'll do today one more topic uh, dhcp relay agent in that i will show you that thing switch switch is layer 2 device we have layer 3 switches also in layer 3 switches we have some routing functionality not all but some functionalities are there so layer 2 or you can say layer 3 it can understand mac address switch create mac table router understand only ip address and switch understand only mac address if you have layer 3 switch in that case it can understand ip as well as mac address now switch if
any traffic comes to switch it will check destination mac in mac table if destination mac entry is in mac table then switch forward then switch forward traffic as unicast otherwise send to all ports otherwise send to all ports that is known as unknown unicast so these are some differences types of switches we had two type of switches one is non manageable and manageable non manageable means you cannot access the console of the switch for example like we have dealing switches normal dealing switches we cannot configure anything manageable switches like we have cisco 2950 2960 3550 3550 3650 3750 3850 3850 3850 we have these switches okay apart from that we have catalyst 4500 series catalyst 6500 series these switches are known as catalyst switches so commands are little bit different in catalyst ios they have catalyst ios in this these two model are layer 2 switch all these are layer 3 so in layer 2 switch they will create only mac address table and in layer 3 they can create routing table as well as mac table clear this thing next point on layer 3 switch by default all ports are layer 2 if you have layer 3 switch any layer 3 switch by default all ports are layer 2 
if you want to convert into layer 3 you can convert into layer 3 now converting into layer 2 or layer 3 means if a port is a layer 2 in that case you cannot assign ip address to that port if you want to assign port ip address to the particular port then that port must be into layer 3 next point if you go with the design perspective so we have core switches we have distribution switches we have access layer switches For example, we have 60 cat 6500 switch, or you can say Nexus 7000, Nexus 9000. This Nexus is a complete data center portfolio switch. Nexus 7K, Nexus 5K, Nexus 2K, Nexus 3K, all those switches are coming under nexus family distribution switch you can use uh, you can use any model on access layer we are using It's like this way. These are the users. User will connect always with the access layer. Then this access layer switch will connect to the distribution layer and that distribution layer switch will connect to the core layer. Now, access layer switch. On access layer switch, end users are connecting. So we are connecting our laptop to the LAN. That means we are connecting to the access layer switch. Distribution layer switch. Distribution layer switch provide interaction between the access layer and the core layer. So normally the routing and gateway load balancing feature will work on the distribution layer. So here you can say user connects. On distribution layer, we are doing routing, switching, advanced switching and load balance and redundancy core layer switch forward traffic to external world as soon as possible 
so in the core layer we are implementing the high level technologies and that is a high end switch which task is to forward your internal traffic to the external world so normally we are using there uh, some advanced technology for example like vss vpc okay so all these advanced technologies we are using on the core layer switches next function of switch so every switch will perform three basic task address learning forward and filter and third one is avoid loops so address learning whenever a switch receive a frame it note down the source mac address and it will forward frame based on the destination mac if there is a information of the destination mac into the mac table then switch will forward that packet as a unicast but if there is no information of the destination mac in mac table then that packet will forward to all active ports this is known as unknown unicast clear this thing okay network segmentation so if you talk about network segmentation we can do network segmentation on layer 1 and layer 2 if we are doing an layer 1 in that case we are implementing subnetting and vlsm on layer 2 we are implementing vlans so this vlan virtual lan will logically divide your broadcast domain how network segmentation network segmentation is like that uh, let's say you have 192.168.1.0/24 in this subnet i will get 254 users valid users so if i assign ip address like this way 192.168.1.1 up to 1.254 and all are slash 24 so they all users will communicate with each other now i want security security in that sense 
let's say in my organization i have different departments i have hr department sales department it department finance account so i want to implement this security all the sales user will communicate with each other all account user will communicate with each other but there will be no interconnectivity between departments means sales user will not communicate with the it team by default if you want to communicate then you have to implement routing okay so for this thing in subnetting what we are doing we are dividing this big network into smaller subnets right so we are dividing into let's say eight blocks so on every eight blocks let's say if my eight blocks are there in that case my subnet will subnet mask will change okay so if it is changing the subnet mask that means i am doing subnetting so it is dividing my network in layer 2 in vlans subnet will be same but it will segregate or it will divide network on layer 2 means on the switch level so how it divide we have to do all these practicals yes now clear question vlan virtual lan so vlan is a logical group of and devices broadcast are contained within the vlan i will explain each and every point in modern design one vlan equal to one ip subnet so that means if you are creating five vlan it is recommended to provide five different ip subnet to each and every separate ip subnet to each and every vlan trunk connect switch switches so that transport multiple vlans switch to switch link must be a trunk link layer 3 devices interconnect the vlans now vlans first thing it is logical grouping of switch ports under a single administrative control next vlan divide broadcast domain vlan divide broadcast domain number of vlans equal to number of broadcast domain vlan provide security by default member of one vlan cannot communicate with member of 
another VLAN in the default condition. If you want to communicate in that case, you have to implement routing. It divide network. <clears throat> no. Default VLAN on switch here I'm just talking about Cisco switches if you have some another vendor maybe uh, default VLAN are different but on the Cisco switch VLAN 1 will be there VLAN 1002 1003 These are known as default VLAN. VLAN 1, default VLAN, and it is also called as native VLAN by default. By default, all ports are member of default VLAN, which is VLAN 1. You cannot delete these VLANs. If you are creating your own VLAN, you can modify, you can delete those VLANs, but these five VLAN, you cannot delete. These are the system VLANs basically. Now, here I write a word, native VLAN. Native VLAN, traffic is untag traffic is untagged means there will be no identification of the vlan VLAN creation. You can create VLAN ID. Okay, total VLAN we have VLAN one two four zero nine five. Total VLAN R four zero nine six. VLAN two two one zero one. You can create these VLAN and these VLAN are known as normal VLAN. Then we have 1002 to 1005. Those are already created. Then we have VLAN 1006 to 4094. These are extended VLAN. And Extended VLAN can create only on transparent mode switch.
can create only on transparent mode switch and on vtp version 3 this is the condition okay now why we can create only these vlan in your uh, for vlan 12 bits are reserved so if you put 2 raised to power 12 you will get 4096 this value so it start from 1 to 1095 Next is type of VLAN. We had two type of VLAN, static VLAN and dynamic VLAN. In static VLAN, we bind ports to VLAN. Whereas in dynamic VLAN, we bind MAC address to VLAN. For dynamic VLAN, there is some condition. This dynamic VLAN can work only on Catalyst 4500 series and Catalyst 6500 series switch. Only in this model. Plus, Dynamic VLAN require VMPS server. VLAN management policy server. It's a software from the Cisco. Okay. Which work with these two products. So this dynamic VLAN we are not going to discuss because we cannot do these practicals because we don't have any at least 6500 switch in the environment and that is not into the lab also we will discuss only static vlan These are some switch models. Okay, how much VLAN they are supporting on to which VLAN ID they are supporting. So 2940 right now, this switch is end of life. That on that switch, you can create maximum four VLAN and ID is from one to 1005. If you're 2950, 2955 is also end of sale. Right now 2960 is there. So maximum 250 VLAN you can create on that particular switch and the ID is 1 to 4094. So these are the limitation hardware limitation on particular model. Okay. VLAN ID 0 and 4095. This is reserved for the system use only. You cannot see and you cannot use these. VLAN ID 1 is the normal VLAN, also called as native VLAN. The traffic of VLAN 1 is untagged, means the traffic 1 
can travel on all the links all the links means can travel on the access link as well as on the trunk link this that thing like what is access link and trunk link an id 221001 this is known as normal vlan and for ethernet vlans you can create delete and modify these vlan vlan id 1225 these are reserved for specific technology for example like fddi token ring vlan id 1006 to 1024 again these are reserved for the system use only so if you want to create the extended vlan again you can create from 1025 to 4094 but the condition be version 3 and transparent mode how we have created the vlan to create the vlan id we have two method first is you can go to the configuration mode and type vlan and vlan id switch privilege mode you can type vlan space database method 1 you can go to the switch privilege mode and you can type vlan space database and after that you can type let's say vlan 10 inside this database if you want to give name you can give name here let's say sales when you are creating the vlan through this method vlan database method you will get a warning message that message will be you can create the vlan through configuration mode also that's it then method number 2 you can directly create the vlan like this way if you want to define the name inside that you can define the name if you want to create multiple vlans at a same time so you can run this type of command let's say vlan 25 to 30 so it will create these vlans 25 26 27 28 29 and 30 if you want to make uh, let's say vlan 30 40 and 50 only so you can write this way also 30 40 50 like this way again the commands are io specific maybe these commands will not run in normal ios okay some commands will run on higher end switches so these commands are how to create the vlan now vlans are created so let's say we have this switch in this switch zero by one zero by two zero by three zero by four so my requirement is i have to put these Two PC into VLAN 10, and these two PC under VLAN 20. And the subnet is 10.0.0.0 slash 8. Means here, let's say I have dot one, dot two, dot three, dot four IP address. So what will be the commands? First thing. you have to create the vlans so let's say vlan 10 after that you can create vlan 20 this will be your step number 
to create the VLAN. The next thing is port assignment to the VLAN. So for that, you have to go to the interface fast ethernet 0 by 1. Inside that, this 0 by 1 belongs to VLAN ID 10. So you have to write a command switch port access VLAN and VLAN ID 10. Then switch port mode access and exit. Switch port mode access, this command is for the end users. So the port which connect to the end user, all ports are access port. The port which connect to the end user, that port will be the access port. And the port which connects, let's say I have a switch to switch connectivity like this way. So let's say 0 by 5 and 0 by 5. So the port which connects switch to switch or switch to router, that port will be a trunk port. Clear this thing? Any question till now? access port and trunk port. Okay, so let's say you have 48 ports on the switch and you are assigning one by one. It take long time. We have a range method also. Let's say in switch, you can write interface range let's say fast ethernet 0 by 3 to 10. So 3 to 10 means fast ethernet 0 by 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And you can run switch port mode access switch port access VLAN 20 and exit. So this is the range method. Clear this thing? Now, uh, check your email. Have you received the mail? I did. It take approximate 10 to 15 seconds and then after that confirm guest. So everyone is on this page. Yep. Okay. So here in the left side corner, you have router switches hub, wireless devices, and this connectivity option, connections. 
so here you have to take switch take any switch 2950 2960 you require here two switches and then n devices in the connection if you know like switch to pc which cable is used anyone switch to pc yeah that will be rj45 rj45 is the connector but what kind of cable cross cable roll over cable or straight cable which cable cross no different devices same sa different devices straight cable same devices cross cable so if you are going to connect switch to switch in that case the cable will be cross if you are connecting switch to pc the cable will be straight so if you see these are the different type of cable if you know what kind of cable you have to connect so choose that one otherwise the first cable automatically detect the device so this cable is a cross cable and this is straight cable clear this thing on this pc you have to assign ip address so you have to just click on the pc go to the desktop and ip address configuration so here i am assigning ip address from the network 10 for example like 10.1 another pc 10.2 okay so on every pc i assign ip address let's see can we communicate ping 10.0.3 on the same switch pc number 2 i am able to communicate then we have 10.7 which is on switch number 2 again i am able to communicate why i am able to communicate because of the vlan 1 on every switch by default vlan 1 is there and all the ports are vlan member of vlan 1 
so here is vlan 1 all ports are member of vlan 1 and vlan 1 is native vlan native vlan means the traffic of vlan 1 can travel on any link whether the link is trunk link or the link is access link any confusion this time um i i'm sorry i was yeah. trying to uh keep up with you on my packet tracer and i didn't see where in the pc settings do i give it an ip okay you click on the pc this window will come go to ip configuration in the desktop uh, ip address configuration clear yes thank you okay now see the switch configuration once you click on the switch there is a option cli you click on the cli and this is the console of the switch and here modes are exactly same your enable mode privilege mode configuration mode interface mode all modes are same so here let's say enable you are into privilege mode so here first command is show vlan so under the show vlan you can see vlan id 1 is there and 1022 1005 by default def name is default and all ports are under vlan 1 remember one point one port can be a member of only one vlan means right now the port is under vlan 1 if you move port from vlan 1 to vlan 10 in that case the port will move vlan 1 to 10 <coughs> okay so as i discussed we had two methods to configure the vlan first method is vlan database and another one you have to go to the config mode so first method vlan space database it is giving a warning message then you can configure vlan 10 if you want to define name you can define name here like this way name sales and i say show vlan your vlan is created but right now there is no ports second method you can configure this thing through configure mode so simply you can type vlan and vlan id let's say 20 inside that if you want to define name you can define name any name you can define let's say you are not defining any name what will happen if you are not defining any name to the vlan switch will automatically assign a name with it vlan id so name will be like this uh, vlan 00020 show vlan clear this thing okay so vlan creation is done now we have to assign ports to the vlan so for that you have to go to the config mode so firstly i am assigning a host name to the switch host name switch 1 now
so first and second port is under vlan 10 and 3 and 4 we have to assign under vlan 20 <coughs> Interface fast Ethernet zero by one. Switch port mode access VLAN. Switch port mode access. Then switch port access VLAN and VLAN ID ten. Exit. Same way zero by two. if you want to define with the single command so you can use interface range fast ethernet 0 by 3 to 4 switch port mode access switch port access vlan 20 if i run here show vlan you can see the result Under this VLAN 10, port number one and two are there. In 20, three and four are there, and you can see the status of the port VLAN one. One to four ports are not there now. So one port can be a member of only one VLAN. Any question till now? So this is the configuration on switch one. So same configuration I'm doing on switch number two. Host name. Okay. On switch two, I'm not creating any VLAN. So there is a point here. If you assign ports to the particular VLAN which is not created. then that vlan will automatically create let's say show vlan so you can see right now here there is no vlan 10 and 20 so if i use this command interface range fast ethernet 0 by 1 to 2 switch port mode access switch port access vlan 10 see this message access vlan does not exist it is creating the vlan automatically show vlan so you can see vlan is also created now we create the vlan before creating the vlan they are able to communicate let's see now previously i check i am able to communicate with vlan uh, sorry this guy 10.3 So ten dot three is this PC number two. So let's see now. You can see you are not able to ping. Why you are not able to ping? Because PC zero is VLAN ten and PC two is into VLAN twenty. So by default it is protecting that traffic. So you are unable to communicate in default condition. With uh, between the VLANs. Previously, you are able to communicate with the seven also. No. So there is no communication between VLAN ten to twenty. But here is also VLAN ten, right? This PC number four is under the VLAN ten, and this is having ten dot five IP address. 
let's say five is able to communicate or not five is also not communicating these are the two pcs let's say they are having 10.0.0.9 10 10.0.0.10 if i'm not assigning these ports to any vlan so by default those ports are under vlan 1 so let's say can 9 ping to 10.0.0.10 it is able to communicate This PC is having dot nine. This PC is having ten. Dot one. If you want to communicate within this VLAN, you are able to communicate within this VLAN. You can communicate within this VLAN. You can communicate within this VLAN. You can communicate, but if you want to communicate, you cannot communicate. If you want to communicate here to here in default condition, you cannot communicate. But the traffic from VLAN 1, this is able to communicate. Why? The reason is VLAN 1 can communicate due to native VLAN. Because VLAN 1 is a native VLAN and VLAN 1 traffic can travel on every VLAN. So here the point is switch knows VLAN 1 is already there. And if you create VLAN 10 and 20, now switch understand, okay, there are multiple VLANs. If multiple VLAN is created on the switch and you are sending that traffic from one switch to another switch, then switch require switch to switch link must be trunk 
if you make this link as a trunk link then only the traffic will travel from this vlan 10 to this vlan 10 this vlan 22 with this vlan 20 clear this thing but vlan 1 traffic is untagged it doesn't matter that link is access link or trunk link vlan 1 traffic is allowed on all the links any question on here okay so what i'm going to do uh verity has a question yes can you explain sorry it's a con i just i'm a, i guess i am I've, I've never been introduced to this but the first question that comes to my mind is isn't that a little bit insecure if vlan can communicate like no matter what see in vlan there is a For first VLAN. point you can communicate within the VLAN on a single switch within a VLAN. Okay. So on switch number one, under the VLAN 10, there are two PC. Zero by one, zero by two, zero by three, zero by four. Clear. So zero by one and zero by two, these two PC are under VLAN 10. So if you try to communicate VLAN 10 to VLAN, sorry, this PC to this PC, you are able to communicate. Let me show you that thing. This PC, PC0 is having 10.0.1. If you communicate with 2, you are able to ping, able to communicate, right? But PC number 3, this 10.0.3 is under VLAN 20. You are not able to communicate. Yeah, that makes sense to me because I understand segregated networks, but I don't understand how, why anyone would want to have a VLAN that could always communicate with all networks. Because that sort of, to me, means that, that VLAN 1, mean so you're talking about VLAN 1, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, this is the uh, by default behavior of the VLAN 1. VLAN 1 traffic is untagged. So if you follow the packet, so let me explain that thing. Let's say PC1. PC1 is try to ping, uh, let's say, 4. PC4. Okay. So, in that case, what will happen? One data traffic is generated here. That data is my ping. Right? So that data received by the switch. On that switch, what will happen? Switch will note down. I received a packet from zero by one. What is the source Mac? It checked. What is the destination Mac? It checked and it checked the VLAN ID also. So this port belongs to VLAN 10. So here it enter the VLAN 10 ID. So now that switch knows this traffic is coming from VLAN 10. 
and switch knows vlan 1 is already there if i had to forward this traffic to another switch then i require at least one trunk link switch to switch connectivity must be trunk link clear this is the case of 10 and 20 or whatever vlan you are creating but let's suppose if the traffic is coming okay let's say i'm creating a switch here and this link is trunk and here there is a pc let's say pc number 6 and that is again into vlan 1 now when you ping pc 5 to pc 6 which is vlan 1 pcs so when this switch receive packet from 5 it note down source mac destination mac and vlan id and here it note down vlan id 1 so vlan id 1 means this traffic can travel to all the links so all the link means now if this link is a access link not a issue this switch will forward that traffic to this switch and that's why you are able to getting the reply but for the multi vlan traffic multi vlan traffic like vlan 10 20 we need at least one trunk link yes any confusion now if you go here so you can see in the show mac address table in vlan it is noting the vlan id also what is the source mac type dynamic means automatically discover through the r protocol and what is the port number now so we are unable to communicate this vlan 10 to this vlan 10 right now so we have to make this link 0 by 5 link as a trunk link so to make a trunk link what we have to do you have to go to the interface fast ethernet 0 by 5 and there is a command switch port mode trunk exit and same command you have to run on the switch number 2 so this link can take maximum 30 second to come up so now if you try 5 10.u.5 is this pc sorry this pc number 4 on switch number 2 under the vlan 10 so vlan id is same so you can communicate but still there will be no communication between the vlan means vlan id 10 to 20 there will be no communication clear this any question okay try to do this lab fast once it done then let me know can hear you g 
Keish, what was the question again? For Keish, I couldn't hear you. What was the question? You had to implement this thing into the packet tracer. Okay, there wasn't anything after that once we have that completed. Right. I've done something wrong because I've been keeping up with you the whole way and now I still can't ping PC zero to PC four. Okay, uh, share your screen. Let me see where is the issue. <laughs> okay, first thing, click on the switch. Mm -hmm. hmm. Oh, hang on, it's on the screen. There we go. You see it? I'm unable to see anything uh, like uh, configuration. Uh, I'm just sure. getting a blue screen. Lost my meeting controls. I may drop off and come right back. So run here, uh, firstly run, uh, show VLAN. So under VLAN 10, you assign port number one and two, mm -hmm. under 20, three and four, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> And then over here. Same thing I've got VLAN 10, 1 and 2, VLAN 23 and 4. Okay. So, see, on your uh, left side corner under the packet tracer, there will be a file. Then add it. What is the third option? Options. Option go to preferences. Uh -huh. And checkbox this always show the port label in the logical workspace. Okay. And close this thing. Okay. So one, two, three, four. Okay. That is the fives. That's six. Six. Okay. Now show me the IP addressing here. Click on the PC. Zero. IP addressing 10.1. Okay. There is no uh, IP. That's no problem. Not, make sure I, I actually gave these guys there. Nope, that's no problem. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, there we go. All right, I'm going to stop sharing them. 
So now in that case, if you try to ping 10.0.0.2, you are able to ping. But if you try to ping 5 and 6, again, you are not able to communicate because that switch to switch link must be a trunk link. Yeah, so I, once I, you define yeah. the trunk link, then only you are able to communicate. It's working now. I'm, I'm pinging 5. and. Okay, great. From... Anyone else who completed this lab? I'm done. Okay. So, entry is completed, Dalton is completed. Chris, Tom, Verity? Okay, I have um, a Mac. I'm trying to figure out how to install it on Mac. So. Okay, okay, not issue. So you can do one thing, you can try this uh, VLAN task into the uh, online labs. Okay. okay. So let's take a 10 minute break and then we'll connect once again. Okay, let me take a coffee. Doing a, another one. Of, did you have another one over here? Uh, we'll connect later. That not an issue. Okay. So now okay. click on the first switch. Switch number one. And on this switch, config T. And then just a VLAN database and create the VLAN. So you can simply type VLAN and VLAN ID. VLAN space 10. Okay. Exit from there. Assign a host name to this switch. Let's say host name and switch number one. Oh. Okay. Now you have to assign the ports to the VLAN. So first command is interface. You must write this down. Okay, I see this. Range, 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 space, fast ethernet, FA zero by one hyphen two. Right. The next command will be switch port access VLAN. What do you mean? Mode access first, right? Uh -huh. uh, switch port access VLAN 10. Then same way you have to define ports under the VLAN 20, port number 3 and 4. Exit from there. I, I just did um which one did, which ones did I do? FA one FA one and two up here on the switch? Yes. Right. So that they're going to one and two. It's so hard to see the little labels, you know. Can you right. move these guys? Is there some way that you could see these better? Right. Uh. So, okay. Exit from there first, because you are right now into oh. the interface. Huh. Mm. 
Have you assigned IP address? Yeah, right. Yeah. Now this one is not my uh, strong suit. Does it matter what I put here? <laughs> yeah. Just make it up. No, no, no. You have to define subnet mask also. Otherwise, that IP will not work. Oh. Okay, it is taking automatically. Ah, uh, team. Then. Not an issue if it is uh, slash eight. That will be not an issue. Okay, I'm still trying to master that part, so I'll just go with what I sort of understand <laughs> right now. Tell me if I'm wrong in that.
Okay, did I? I don't think I see anything on VLAN 20. Well, on the port. I guess I don't understand what I'm looking at here. We got 10 and 20. I guess it looks like I did it right. Is that right? Are you agreeing with yeah, that? The, uh, the configuration is correct, not issue. Okay. So now go to the PC 0, first PC, and try to ping. Try to ping uh, 1.2. Desktop. Close this thing. Lower uh, this one. No, no, not this one. Oh. Command prompt. One dot two. One one dot one is the self IP. One dot two. You are able to ping because you are communicating within the same VLAN on another PC. Uh -huh. Try to three. You are not able to ping because that PC is under VLAN 20. Okay. Now try to ping 10.1.5. Uh, Again, you will not able to ping because that VLAN 10 is on another switch. I'm trying to exit out the last ping that you you could oh there we go because it's on another switch and I need a trunk right so you have to go to the interface fast Ethernet zero by five on both the switches and you have to run the command switch port mode trunk. Okay. The first configuration mode. Ah. Yes. And do this, that's all, just that one. And do the same thing on switch number two. Take approximate 20, uh, 30 seconds. Now it's up. Now try to ping uh, from PC uh, 0 to again 10.5, uh, 1.5. Yeah. 1.5. Yeah. Well, I put this, I, I'm not very good at submitting yet, but I actually chose 10.5 no, no. on this one. No, no, no. You changed the subnet. So put it here 10 10 10.1.5. Right. Don't change the subnet. I guess they sort of thought they were on a different subnet. Like I said, I'm, 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 I have to do further research on subnetting. It's right. So Not each separate VLAN is sort of like a subnet, right? Right. Do we don't want to subnet our subnets? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> okay. Now again, try to ping 1.5. You should communicate. It should communicate. Right? But again, Excellent. if you try to communicate in VLAN 20, you will not able to communicate. The reason is VLAN 10 and 20 will not communicate with each other in default condition. So our next task... the routing. Right. The next task will be the inter-VLAN routing. How we have to communicate into VLAN 10 to 20. That will be our next task. Okay. Okay. Thank you for helping me. That's I really appreciate that. It really makes a lot of sense now. I was a little, very lost in my brain. So. Okay. so let's take a 10 minute break and then. Configuration of VLAN, we done. How to assign ports to the VLAN, we done. 
switch port mode access this command is used to make a port as a access port switch port host host keyword is a macro basically right so under this host command there are certain command which automatically run with the host keyword for example if you run the switch port host spinning tree port fast and it will disable the ether channel can't see your screen rakesh oh sorry there is a switch port host command switch port host is a macro macro is basically uh, containing multiple command through a single keyword so for example if you go to the interface and if you are running this command switch port host so that particular command will run switch port mode access and enable spinning tree protocol and port fast and it will disable the ether channel so under this host keyword these are the commands which run automatically so you can say the macro is basically uh, containing multiple commands switch port access vlan vlan id like this way to verify if you want to verify the particular vlan id the command is show vlan id and the id number for example like in our case it's vlan id 10 you can search with the help of name also if you want to check the running configuration of the particular port how many commands you run under the particular port so you can run this command show running configuration interface fast ethernet 0 by 1 or 0 by 2 so it will give you the configuration of particular that port okay this command is very important show interface fast ethernet and then number and after that switch port so this command will tell you switch port enabled switch port enabled means right now that particular port is a layer 2 port administrative mode static access static access means on that particular port you run the command switch port mode access so that is a statically you are making that port as a access port operational mode down why this operational mode is down because right now dtp protocol is not working dtp is dynamic trunking protocol dtp is used to make trunk link dynamically right now we are making trunk link manually statically via switch port mode trunk command there is another method which is a dtp protocol through dtp protocol we can make trunk link we'll do this lab access mode vlan 20 this port belongs to vlan 20 trunking native vlan is vlan id 1 is the native vlan right now this port also belongs to voice vlan okay so all these things if you want to check how many mac address learn on that particular port so you can run that particular command show mac address table interface gigabit ethernet 0 by 1 and vlan 1 okay next is trunking first thing is switch port type a port can be access port a port can be a trunk port a port can be a dynamic auto and a port can be a 
डायनेमिक डिजायरेबल एक्सेस पोर्ट एक्सेस पोर्ट कनेक्ट टू एंड यूजर्स एक्सेस पोर्ट बिलोंग्स टू सिंगल व्हील एन ट्रंक पोर्ट ट्रंक पोर्ट कैरी मल्टीपल व्हील एन ट्रैफिक ट्रंक पोर्ट कैरी मल्टीपल व्हील एन ट्रैफिक If you are running this command, switch port mode trunk. So by default, all VLANs are allowed on that particular trunk link. Dynamic auto and dynamic desirable. These two ports used with DTP. DTP is dynamic trunking protocol. okay dtp is used to make trunk link dynamically till now we are making trunk link manually next trunk encapsulation there are two type of encapsulation on the trunk link one is isl and one is dot 1q isl is inter switch link isl is cisco proprietary it will work only on the cisco devices it adds 30 byte extra data it support only normal vlan dot 1q is a open standard protocol it add only 4 byte data and it support normal and extended vlan ISL is obsolete right now from the Cisco switches so if you are purchasing the new hardware new switches in that case ISL support will be not there let's say if you have layer 3 switch let's say it is 3560 it's 0 by 1 so in the layer 3 switch
as i told you by default all ports are layer 2 so if you want to assign ip address to this interface so first command will be no switch port so when you enter the no switch port it will get layer 3 functionality and after that you can assign ip address whatever ip address you want to assign okay so this no switch port is for layer 3 if a port is layer 3 and if you want to make it as a layer 2 in that case interface first ethernet 0 by 1 and if you simply type switch port then this port will become layer 2 next we have inter vlan routing so inter vlan routing we can do with the help of two method one with the router when we are doing inter vlan routing with the router this is known as router on stick second method with multi layer switch so we will do both the methods So let's say scenario is this we have this router on this router we have one switch on that switch we have these four computers these two pc belongs to vlan 10 these two pc belongs to vlan 20 in vlan 10 we have network 10.0.0.0/8 and in vlan 20 we have 20.0.0/8 clear this thing yep okay so let's say the port numbers are like this 0 by 1 0 by 2 0 3 0 4 and this is 0 by 5 connected with fast ethernet 0 by 0 and this is my router so what will be the step to configure inter vlan routing so i'm just writing the syntax and the steps so step number 1 create vlans step number 2 assign ports third step on this router this router will provide the routing functionality to these two vlans right so when we are doing rou routing 
there is a concept of default gateway when we require default gateway when we are communicating to different ip subnet means if we want to travel network 10 to 20 then we need a default gateway here we have only one interface okay this interface if on this interface if i assign ip address 10.0.0.1 that will work as a default gateway for vlan 10 but what about vlan 20 this vlan 20 also require a default gateway okay so that means on this single interface i need at least two ip address we have one physical interface and we need two ip addresses because we have two different vlans so to resolve this problem create sub interface on router you have to create the sub interfaces for example fast ethernet 0 by 0 dot 1 first interface then fast ethernet 0 by 0 dot 2 like this way so once you create the sub interfaces you can assign different ip addresses for example like here you can assign 10.0.0.1 here you can assign so dot 1 fourth step make router to switch link trunk so these will be the steps Are you just showing us how it's supposed to be done, Rakesh, or do you want us to be following along on our packet tracer? No. Uh, firstly, I am showing you this lab how we have to do inter VLAN routing. Then you have to perform this lab. Very well. So this is the VLAN ten, and here I'm using ten dot zero dot zero dot. This subnet. So step number one, we have to create the VLAN. Then 
then step number 2 we have to assign ports to the vlan step number 2 is complete so let's verify show vlan so you can see vlan 10 and 20 is there and ports are assigned according to our requirement let's assign ip address if i try to communicate within the vlan <clears throat> i am able to communicate if i try to communicate in 20 network i will not able to communicate because we have different vlan and different ip subnet right now so step number 3 is we have to create the sub interfaces on the router Firstly, you have to enter into the interface. So. Then first command will be no shutdown. You have to enable this interface. and no ip address we are not defining any ip address to the physical interface okay so first step is you have to enable the interface and you have to define there is no ip address on that physical interface next task is you have to configure sub interfaces so to create the sub interfaces interface interface name dot 1 you can create n number of sub interfaces then here you have to define encapsulation dot 1q and 10 this 10 is the vlan id 10 means this particular sub interface gigabit ethernet 0 by 0 dot 1 this interface belongs to vlan id 10 inside that you can define a ip address 10.0.0.1 same way another sub interface encapsulation dot 1q 20 and one ip address from 20 network If you want to see the full configuration of sub interface do show history So to create the sub interfaces i run all these commands So first command is just to create the sub interfaces then encapsulation dot 1q and after that vlan id 10 means this interface belongs to vlan id 10 and it is having this ip address same way gigabit ethernet 0 by 2 belongs to vlan id 10 and 
it is having 20.0.0.1 ip address the router task is over now next last task is you have to go to the switch and you have to define this interface fast ethernet 0 by 5 switch port mode trunk this is a trunk link that's it so once this trunk is enabled <coughs> you are able to communicate but this time you are communicating into different IP subnets so you need a default gateway also so for the 10 network 10.1 will be the default gateway and for the 20 network clear all the steps now if you try to communicate in 20 network your first packet will be dropped and then it will start communication clear so this is the inter VLAN routing and you can see here TTL value is 127 by default is 128 and it cross this one router layer 3 device so that's why it decrease minus one Any question? Um, when I, I'm trying it again right now, but when I put in the router and I selected it, <clears throat> uh, it was, it, it was like it was uh, brand new out of box. It was asking for initial config. Um, so you had to type there no. Okay. Why you are getting this message? Because right now it is looking for the startup configuration and it is not find any startup configuration into the NVRAM. That's why it is asking, do you want to configure with the initial configuration or not? So if you press there, yes, it will ask lots of information. What will be the IP address there? What will be the console password, auxiliary password, telnet password? It asks all the things, all right? So we are pressed simply no. Whatever is the desired configuration, we will do manually. Yes, try to implement this lab, everyone. If you are getting any issue, then let me know. Next. So we done inter VLAN routing with the router. So next task is Inter VLAN routing with multi layer switch means with layer 3 switch. So let us assume we have this layer 3 switch 3550, it is connecting to this switch. This is 2960. These two PC VLAN 10, VLAN 20. Here we have network 10. Okay. So this interface is 0 by 5. Let's say this is 0 by 1. So same way. Step 1, you have to create VLAN. Step 2, assign ports. Now, step number 3. In step number 3, you have to create SVI. On the multi-layer switch, SVI is switch 
virtual interface so now what is svi assigning ip to vlan assigning ip to vlan is known as svi so once you create svi the next task is l3 switch to l2 switch link must be trunk and fifth enable routing on l3 switch these are the steps on router routing feature is by default enable on layer 3 switch you have to enable the routing feature so let's say in this network vlan is already created and ports are already assigned so i'm just removing this router so instead of router i am placing one layer 3 switch which is 3560 this one okay now so step number 1 and step number 2 is already there we can see show vlan so vlan is there and port is already there now we have to configure this multi layer switch first thing if you want to communicate in vlan 10 and 20 those vlan 10 and 20 must be there so vlan 10 and 20 i created there now you have to create the svi so svi is just to assign ip address to the interface sorry to the vlan so you have to write this command interface vlan 10 now you are inside the vlan then you can define ip address let's say 10.0.0.1 255.0.0.0 then no shut exit same way interface vlan 20 there you can define ip address 20.0.1 and no shut this thing is known as svi assigning ip address to the vlan is known as svi so svi is created next task we have to make trunk link from layer 3 switch to layer 2 interface fast ethernet 0 by 1 okay if you write here directly in switch port mode trunk so this command will not work it is giving one error message command rejected an interface whose trunk encapsulation is auto you cannot configure that link as a trunk link so what is the solution for that you have to run first switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q you have to define that trunk encapsulation and after that if you run switch port mode trunk that command will work On layer 2 switch, that fast Ethernet 0 by 5 is already trunk link. Last step, you have to enable the routing. So to enable the routing, there is a command IP space routing. That's it. Let's try once again. Within the same VLAN, I am able to communicate.
should start communicating. So now you are able to communicate into different VLAN also. So this is inter VLAN routing with multi layer switch. Normally we are doing inter VLAN routing with layer three switch only because just to communicate into the VLAN, if you are taking a router, that is not feasible solution because router cost is very high as compared to switch and in the router we have limited number of interfaces whereas in the multi layer switch we are getting like 24 or 48 switch ports okay now verity it's your question see let's say on this interface i have a interface fast ethernet 0 by 10 it's a layer 2 switch if i run here no switch port this command is not working why because this switch is already a layer 2 and layer 2 switch ports can't be layer 3 but it's a layer 3 switch let's say interface fast ethernet 0 by 10 i'm on layer 3 now so no switch port this command is working so the point is on layer 3 switch port can behave as a layer 2 as well as layer 3 but on layer 2 switch port cannot be layer 3 port clear this thing any question Next is DTP. DTP is Dynamic Trunking Protocol. Used to make trunk link dynamically DTP is by default enable DTP is Cisco proprietary Dynamic auto and dynamic desirable. These two these two ports are used with for DTP. Let's say we have these two switches. If I configure this port as a dynamic auto and if I configure this as a 
dynamic desirable so automatically this link will become trunk link now what this dynamic auto and dynamic desirable will do the port which is configured dynamic desirable that will initiate trunk and dynamic auto just respond so dynamic auto will work as a passively so in dynamic auto there are certain combinations so let's say if on one switch if you have dynamic auto and another switch you have dynamic auto so link will automatically become access link if one side you have dynamic desirable another side you have dynamic auto so link will automatically become trunk link if one side you have trunk and another side you have dynamic auto the link will become trunk any combination with the access you will get access port only dynamic auto dynamic desirable trunk dynamic desirable dynamic desirable also trunk trunk with the dynamic desirable the link with status will be trunk so that dtp is used to make trunk link dynamically basically okay if you want to disable this dtp so there is a command switch port no negotiate you have to enter into the interface and you have to run this command switch port no negotiate so it will disable the dtp protocol on that particular link if you run the command switch port mode trunk by default all vlans are allowed vlan id 1 start from 1 to 4094 all vlans are allowed on that trunk link but if you want to allow specific vlan on the trunk link then you can run this command switch port trunk allowed vlan and the particular vlan information i connect these two switches with port number 0 by 10 so if you want to see show interface fast ethernet 0 by 10 switch port so if you run this command so you will get switch port is enabled means that port is behaving right now layer 2 and right now operational administratively mode is dynamic auto and if you see the table if both side is dynamic auto link will become access so here is also dynamic auto that's why the operational mode is static access and here you can see negotiation is on means the dtp protocol is working so what i am going to do i am just changing the port type on this switch switch port mode dynamic desirable previously it is dynamic auto i am changing to dynamic desirable dynamic desirable operational mode still it is showing access because negotiation is still going on so after some time
dynamic desirable is not giving the correct result it should Dikesh, be I, I did the same commands you did and mine did actually switch over to operational mode trunk yeah it should be trunk okay so maybe this packet tracer is having some issue otherwise so you are using the same switch yes that's correct Okay, so that must be a trunk link. Okay, because dynamic desirable to dynamic auto, the link must be a trunk link. Okay. Next. VLAN trunking protocol, VTP protocol. So VTP is basically provide VLAN management, centralized management of the VLAN. VLAN trunking protocol, VTP is a Cisco proprietary protocol that automates the propagation of the VLAN information between the switches via trunk link. This minimizes the misconfiguration and the configuration inconsistencies. So let assume you have a building in which you have hundred of switches, right? And your requirement is you have to configure VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 in every switch. So if you have hundred switches and the configuration every day, you have to create some new VLAN and you have to remove some VLAN. So for the administrator, it is difficult to go to every switch and change the VLAN configuration. So through the VTP, what we can do, we can create a server switch. We will do all the configuration on the server switch. And through that server switch configuration, the lower switch will automatically get all the VLANs, whatever VLAN are required into the network. So we are creating VLAN only on one switch and it will propagate those VLAN to the downward switches. That is the working of VTP protocol. VTP does not configure switch port as a VLAN membership. Okay. No need to configure VLAN membership, but the requirement is you have to configure switch to switch link as a trunk link. three type of VTP messages are sent via layer to multicast on the VLAN one. We'll discuss what are the three type of messages. Okay. When you configure VTP, then you have to define the VTP domain and on all the switches VTP domain must be same. VTP domain name is case sensitive. In VTP, we have these three modes, client mode, server mode, and transparent mode. By default, every switch in server mode. That's why we are able to create the VLAN. So in the server mode, you can create, modify and delete the VLAN. It will send and forward advertisement to other switches. It will synchronize the configuration with the latest information received from other switches in the management domain. 
and it save the configuration to the nvram so in server mode you can create delete and modify vlan it will send vtp advertisement to the downward switches vlan configuration save in nvram and it will synchronize the configuration with the latest information latest information is here configuration revision number whenever you do any configuration changes into the vlan the configuration revision number will be increased by 1 by default configuration revision number is 0 so if you are creating the vlan if you are changing the name if you are deleting the vlan every time your configuration revision number will be increased by 1 next mode is the client mode in client mode there is a security feature you cannot create delete and modify the vlan you will get all the vlan from the server switch it will forward advertisement to other switch it will synchronize the vlan configuration with the latest information received from other switch in the management domain and vlan configuration will not save in nvram because the vlan are not created on the client switch transparent mode in the transparent mode you can create modify and delete the vlan but those vlan will be only on local to the switch this transparent switch will not synchronize with the client and server it will just bypass that information it will forward that information to the next switch and it will save the configuration into the nvram vtp operation vtp advertisement are sent on the multicast frame so it use the multicast address to sending the vtp information on the vlan 1 vtp server and client synchronize the latest revision number so as i told you by default configuration revision number is 0 so whenever you create the vlan the configuration revision number will be increased by 1 vtp advertisement travel in every 5 minute or whenever there is a change okay we'll discuss this thing later let do first lab so let us assume we have five floors and on every floor we have one switch so let's say i want to configure this switch as a server switch client client transparent and client now for the vtp all switch to switch link must be trunk link because vtp advertisement travel only on the trunk link so your first task is you have to configure all switches as a trunk link
See, actually, just I'm just uh, doing trunking on every interface. Switch to switch interface. You have to run this command. Switch port more trunk. That's why I'm doing a little bit faster. So not a issue. Uh, so in the last switch. So till now, on all the switches, I run this command on every switch, host name and whatever host name you want to give, and mostly on all the switches we have zero by one and zero by two port number. So I just write interface range fast Ethernet zero by one and two switch port mode trunk. Any confusion now? I run all these these command on all the switches. Then. Let's say I'm on the switch number one. There is a command show VTP status. So you can see right now VTP version is two. Configuration revision number is zero. Why zero? Because we haven't create any VLAN right now. Maximum VLAN supported two five five. Number of existing VLAN is five. VLAN one is there, one thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, and one thousand five. That's why it is showing five. VTP operational mode is server, so by default every switch is in server mode. Domain name is not there because we haven't configured VTP till now. Now we are going to configure VTP. So for VTP, you have to define a VTP domain name, and domain name is ABC. Any name you can give, but that name is case sensitive. Then VTP password. It's for the security purpose, and this command is optional. So VTP domain is the first command. VTP password is the second command. VTP mode. And if you type question mark here, you will get three modes: server, client, transparent. So here, switch number one is my server. Server. on the client same command just you have to change the mode So I define VTP domain name, then I define VTP password and VTP domain. VTP mode is client. Same command on this switch.
VTP domain, VTP password, and VTP mode client. On switch number four, we need transparent mode. So here I define transparent. Here again we need client. You can just select and right click on the device uh, uh, router console. Copy and paste will work on the routers. If I copy from here, I can paste to the router console. That is a feature of iOS. Copy and paste will work. That's why normally, um, let's say uh, there is a pre-configured router and you took the configuration of that router, startup configuration backup and you had to configure a new router with the same configuration. So what you can do, you can just copy the previous configuration of that text file configuration and go to the router console into the configuration mode and simply paste all command will work. Okay. So we configure everything. So next task is you have to create VLAN. You have to create VLAN here on the server VLAN 10, 20, 30, and 40. So you can see I'm creating VLAN only on the server switch. So VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, VLAN 40. I create four VLAN. Show VTP status. So you can see configuration revision number is four. So whatever changes you are doing into the VLAN, the configuration revision number will be increased by one. So I create four VLAN, that's why here division number is four. If I delete a VLAN, let's say if I'm writing no VLAN 30, in that case, again, it will increase the VTP configuration revision number. So I configure these VLAN only on the server switch. So let's see on the client switch. Show VLAN. So you can see client switch is receiving the VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40. If I try to create VLAN here, let's say VLAN 50. You are getting an error message. VTP VLAN configuration is not allowed into the client mode. Show VLAN. The VLAN information reached to the switch number three. Let's see on the last switch. Show VLAN. This switch is also receiving 10, 20, 30, 40. Transparent mode switch, this switch number four. Transparent mode switch will not synchronize VLAN configuration with client and server. If it is receive VLAN information from the client or server switch, it will just bypass that information to the next switch. 
so if you run here show vlan you will not get vlan 10 20 30 40 here there is no 10 20 30 40 but here you will get one more functionality you can create vlan locally on the switch and this vlan 50 will not travel anywhere vlan 50 is not traveling anywhere but let's say if on the server if you create one more vlan vlan 60 that vlan 60 is immediately reflecting to all the client switches so this is your vtp protocol any question into the vtp Yes, anyone? I wish I'd known about this about five years ago. Yeah. Okay. Is there any problem in this type of scenario? if the vlan are propagating with revision number is there any problem can you see that one more time see right now all client switches receiving the vlan information based on the configuration revision number so whenever i am creating any vlan on to the server switch server switch is create Con, uh, increasing the configuration revision number for example previously i created four vlan so configuration revision number is four here so that switch server switch will update this information to client switch i have cr number 4 configuration revision number 4 and with the configuration revision number 4 i have 10 20 30 40 vlan when you change or modify any other vlan so configuration revision number will be increase on the server and server will give this information to the client switch configuration revision number is change and i have configuration revision number is 5 previously you have 4 so higher the configuration revision number information is more reliable getting this thing now yes but if it is working based on the configuration revision number then there is a issue in the network what will be the issue anyone so the issue is let's say this switch this switch is a attacker switch or let's say this switch is managed by some attacker or hacker 
and he want to destroy your network so what he can do right now in my network in this existing network configuration revision number is 5 we can verify show vtp status you can see configuration revision number is 5 right on the switch i'm creating let's say vlan 100 101 102 103 104 5 6 7 8 9 show vlan all vlans are created show vtp status now my configuration revision number is what 11 if i connect this attacker switch to the existing network what will happen the attacker switch will become the server switch right so it create the rough vlan which are not existing in my network so automatically those vlan will propagate to all the switches so all the switches will remove vlan 10 20 30 40 40 vlan information this type of attack is known as vlan hopping attack so this is the problem in vtp version 1 and 2 there is a advanced concept vtp version 3 in that vtp version 3 they add a new feature of primary server so primary server means in one vtp domain only one switch can be a primary server there can be n number of server switch but primary switch can be only one clear and you have to manually define that primary switch clear that point so that uh, vtp version 3 concept is into ccnp not here Okay, so this is the VTP. So next thing is VTP pruning. Now, let's say this switch four is a server switch, and all these switches are client switch. We have two PC. into the vlan rad and the pc are connected to switch number 4 and switch number 1 so when you configure vtp vtp will flood that information vtp all the vlan information to all the ports okay so let us assume on that vlan uh, on that switch number 4 i configure vlan uh, red blue green multiple vlan but in vlan rad we have host only on switch number 4 and switch number 1 there is no host connected on switch number 5 6 and 
so if i am sending that vlan red information to these links so they will consume some amount of bandwidth so just to reduce the consumption of the bandwidth from vtp we can enable the vtp pruning on the server switch you have to configure only this feature only on the server switch so it will automatically block those uh flooding of the vtp advertisement on those links where we don't have any host into the particular vlan so once you configure vtp pruning on switch number 4 in that case it will block vtp uh, sorry vlan red information on switch number 5 6 and 3 in this direction it will not forward that information why because they don't have any host into the particular vlan so what this vtp is pruning is doing vtp pruning prevent the flooded traffic from propagating to the switch that do not have member into the specific vlan vtp pruning use the vtp advertisement to determine when the trunk connection is flooded traffic necessarily switch 1 and 4 figure support the port statically configured with the vlan red so that's why they are receiving this advertisement we have vtp version 1 2 and 3 <coughs> sorry these are the three messages vtp messages summary advertisement subset and advertisement request when first time you configure the vtp summary advertisement will travel it contain all the vlan information subset advertisement will travel only in that case if you have created new vlan or you have modified the new vlan advertisement request will travel only in that case if the switch is rebooted and if the domain name is changed so these are the vtp messages any question in vtp anyone seems pretty clear to me stp spinning tree protocol <coughs> stp is used to avoid lay to loops in redundant network so redundant network means where we have multiple connectivity for example switch 1 is connected with switch 2 switch this is known as daisy chain topology daisy chain <coughs> in this we have single point of failure if any link goes down then the network will be separate then we have redundant topology redundant means we have multiple links if any link fail then no issue we have another link so in the network 
we require redundancy redundancy based on the link redundancy based on the services redundancy based on the device <coughs> So if you want to go from PC A to PC B, in that case, you have two paths. Either you can go via switch one, two, four, and then B. You can go via switch one, three, four, and then B. So you have multiple path. Okay. Issue in the redundant topology. A redundant topology eliminate a single point of failure. A redundant topology cause broadcast from multiple frame copies and MAC address table instability problems. I will tell you how. A loop avoidance mechanism is required. For example, <clears throat> You have these two switches. This is the PC. This PC is having MAC address AAA and IP is let's say 10.0.1. And this PC MAC address is B and the IP address is 10.2. Zero by one. Right now, we are assuming there is no STP running. In this topology, there is no spinning tree and switch one and switch two are fresh switches fresh switches in the sense they don't have any mac table entry right now if they don't have any mac address entry let's say this pc ping 10.2 so what will happen in that case this pc a created data that data is received by the switch one. So what this switch one will do? Switch one will note down, I receive a packet from fast ethernet zero by one. And it note down the source Mac, source Mac is AAA. Destination Mac, don't know. So we don't know the destination Mac, so it will put FFFF. So when this information received by the switch, this switch will forward that information to both the link. Why? Because destination Mac address is unknown. So let's hold this packet right now. When this packet received by the switch number two, what switch two will do? Switch will two perform the same action. Source MAC is AAA and destination MAC is FFFF. So due to this functionality, this PCB received the frame and one packet again reverse back to the switch number one. So switch one will receive this frame on port number 0 by 3 and the destination MAC is again unknown. So this packet revolve continuously. Now this packet, this packet will perform the same function
So again, this packet will revolve into the network. This is loop. Means the unwanted traffic which is revolving in your network, that traffic is loop. So why this problem? Because of this redundant topology, if I remove this one link, in that case, the traffic will come via this way and back to the destination. But if I'm using only one single link, then single point of failure will be there. If that link goes down, the network will be down. So redundancy is my requirement and due to the redundancy loops are formed. So to avoid the loops, we need such mechanism so that if we have multiple link, one link will become primary and another link will become secondary. And the solution is STP protocol. Now, If no STP into the network, then there will be three problems. First, unwanted traffic, which is your loops. Second, <clears throat> wrong entry in MAC table. And third one is multiple copy receive on destination. So every time when the packet is revolving, it will receive one copy every time. Second point wrong entry. If you see this statement, this is the MAC address of PC A and either this PC can connect on port number 0 by 1 or can be connected on 0 by 3. One PC cannot connect to the two ports. So this is the wrong entry. And why this wrong entry is created? Because in this there is no spanning tree protocol. So if you use STP, you will get, uh, you will resolve all these three problems. Any question till now? No, okay. Next. So we have to discuss how STP works. So STP remove loops from layer to redundant network. How? STP complete their task in three steps. First, election of root bridge. Election of root ports. Election of designated and block port. For example, we have this scenario. The switch is having MAC address A, B and C. No. 
so first point election of root bridge election of root bridge root bridge is that switch which is having lower bridge id so now what is this bridge id bridge id is the combination of two things one is system priority and mac address mac address of switch so bridge id is total 8 byte data by default priority on every switch 32768 this is the default priority on every switch and this field is for 2 byte and mac address is unique on every switch and this is 6 byte firstly priority check lower switch priority will be road bridge if priority same then lower mac address switch will be road bridge this point is clear so election of root bridge by default priority is 32768 and the range can be 0 to 65535 mac address is unique okay this is the picture now tell me which switch will be the root bridge in this switch b no yes switch switch b will be the root bridge if you see priority is same 286272 286272 if you compare the mac address four field is 0 0 next is 0c 0c it is showing ab and here is 9f so 9 is lower than a because a value is 10 so switch b is my root bridge clear this thing mac address is in hexadecimal form so 0 to 9 after that capit uh, a is 10 b is 11 c is 12 so like that A to capital F. So this is the first point. 
election of root bridge second election of root ports root ports are shortest path coast to reach road bridge shortest path coast to reach root bridge now root port exist on non root bridges bridges means switch only one port can be a root port per non root bridge if your speed is 10 mbps your path cost value will be 100 if your speed is 100 mbps then path cost will be 19 1 gbps 4 10 gbps lower path cost port will be root port so for example we have these three switches here let's say mac address is a a a b c all connectivity is fast ethernet so all links 100 mbps so on 100 mbps the path cost is 19 so 19 19 19 now due to the lower mac this will become root bridge now second task root ports so root port is the shortest path coast to reach the root bridge so if you are on switch number 2 and you want to go to the root bridge so you have this port and this port so if you are going by this way the path coast is 19 and if you are going by this way 19 plus 19 38 so on this path you are getting the lower path cost value so this port will become root port and for the same way this port will become root port on the switch number 3 root port exists only on non root bridges means the switch which is not a root and only one port can be a root port per non root bridges
last. Election of designated port and block port. On route bridge, all ports are designated. Designated ports are forwarding ports. Block port used to avoid loops. On known route bridge. where we are getting lower bridge ID that switch port will be designated and the switch which is having higher bridge ID that switch port will be block. So now if you see all links are connected with one GPPS link. So that means path cost will be four. So if this switch is switch number B is root bridge. So then switch B all ports are designated port. So you can see all ports are designated port. On every switch one port will be the root port. So from here I'm getting four, four, and four. So that's why these links are these ports are root port. This port will be the DP. Okay. That link will be block. Why? Because that port is having higher bridge ID. So if you compare these two MAC addresses, sorry, this switch is having priority 28672. So the election happened based on the priority here. It is not coming to the MAC address. So priority win. So switch A will be having the better bridge ID. So that's why that port will be the DP and this port is going to be block. So this is the STP process, how the STP is working. Now, types of spanning tree protocol. So in spanning tree, we have lots of flavor. One flavor is CST, common spanning tree. CST is assume the one spanning tree instance for the entire bridging network, regardless the number of VLAN. Means let's say if on your switch, you have 10 VLANs. So for every VLAN, there will be only one single instance that is known as CST, common spanning tree. PBST plus right now on every switch, PBST plus is enabled by default. Now what is PBST plus per VLAN spanning tree? Means for every VLAN, there is a separate spanning tree 
instance if you create vlan 10 and 20 on switch so for vlan 10 there is a separate spanning tree and for vlan 20 there is a separate spanning tree stp is running on every vlan as well as on every port next is okay these are the standards 802.1s this is multiple spanning tree MSTP, you can combine the multiple VLAN and you can define under one single instance. Rapid PVST, the advance of PVST plus. We'll discuss how it is advanced and why we are calling it rapid. These are the standard STP, normal STP, we are telling like 802.1D. RSTP 802.1W, MSTP 802.1S. The default configuration, the default spanning tree configuration on the Cisco Catalyst switches is PVST plus. And PVST plus is by default on VLAN 1. Slower convergence after the topology change then with RSTP. How? STP port states. In STP, we have disable listening, learning, forwarding and block. These are the five state into the spanning tree. Disable means no BPDU. Now what is BPDU? I will tell you. Listening state. BPDU receive. Learning open BPDU. It forward its own BPDU. In block, listen and learn. BPDU, but not forward. Now, what is this BPDU? Bridge protocol data unit. A port can take listening to learning 15 second. Learning to forwarding 15 second. This is known as forwarding delay. Bridge protocol data unit. Now, <clears throat> it's a kind of fellow packet. Which carry bridge ID of switches. 
BPDU, hello. BPDU packet travel in every two seconds. BPDU max age. 20 seconds. Means if I'm not receiving any BPDU from the neighbor switch within the 20 second, then I will break the neighborship. There are two types of BPDU. One is the configuration BPDU. Configuration BPDU travel in every two seconds, which carry the bridge ID. One is the TCN. TCN is topology change notification. This TCN BPDU will travel only in that case if there is a change into the topology. Change into the topology, maybe some link goes down. You added some new links. You added the new switch. Okay, here they are showing you had two VLAN, VLAN 1 and VLAN 2. For VLAN 1, this switch is the root bridge and for VLAN 2, this switch is the root bridge. So they are going to show you for every VLAN, there is a separate spanning tree instances. PVST plus extended bridge ID. Now I told you the system priority is by default 32768 by default. But if you run show spanning tree, you will get 3269. So extended bridge ID means whatever is your VLAN ID that will be added into the priority. So if you have VLAN ID 10, so you will get uh, priority 32778. So whatever is your VLAN ID that will be added into your default priority. And the default priority is 32768. So this will be topology in your uh, labs. If you want to see what is your bridge ID, what is your priority? So you can run show spanning tree and VLAN and VLAN ID. If you type simply show spanning tree, you will get all the details also. If you want to make a switch as a primary switch for the particular VLAN, so you can run this command spanning tree VLAN one root primary. So switch one will become root bridge for VLAN one. If you run this command on switch number two, so on switch number two for VLAN one, that root will be secondary root. Means you can define on switch number two spanning tree VLAN and then VLAN ID, let's say two root primary. So in that case for VLAN one, switch one will be the root and for VLAN 2, switch 2 will be the root. So you can do this modification. You can change the priority also. Show spanning 3 VLAN. Let's say we have these two switches, switch one and switch two. 
if we connect like this way redundant link on two switches mac address is a mac address is b the default priority is 32768 Three two seven six eight. This is the default priority. So tell me which switch will be the root bridge? Switch A or switch one? Switch one will be the root bridge. Let's say if I configure here, VLAN one is already there, and I create VLAN ten also. Uh, let's take that example. VLAN two, and VLAN one is also there. VLAN two is also there. Now tell, if I create multiple VLAN, which switch will be the root bridge? So in that case, again, switch one will be the root bridge for all the VLAN. So that means, if this is the root bridge, so these ports will be DP. dp one of the link will become the root port so let assume this port will be the root port and this port will be the block so this port will not be used that port will be into standby so this port is right now primary link so every time this link will use for the both the vlan but there is a command for example you have switch 1 if i run here spinning tree vlan 1 root primary and A spinning hyphen tree, VLAN two, root, secondary. Switch number two, a spinning tree, VLAN two, root, primary. and the spinning tree vlan 1 root secondary so in that case what will happen so this switch will be the root for vlan 1 and this switch will be the root for vlan 2 this is the working of these two command so that means you can get the redund uh, redundancy plus load balancing so in that case both the links will be in used so for vlan 1 this port will be block and for vlan 2 this port will be block same task you can you can achieve with this command also so switch 1 you can change the priority a spinning tree vlan 1 priority 4096 and a spinning tree vlan 2 priority 8192 and you can write opposite on the switch number 2 spinning tree vlan 2 priority 4096 spinning tree vlan 1 priority 8192 so you can do modification based on the root primary and root secondary or you can change the value spanning tree priority value
But remember one thing: priority can be changed only in the multiple of four zero nine six. You cannot define priority one, two, three, four, five, ten like this. Priority will be multiple of four zero nine six only. So this thing we done. So if you see here, priority is two eight seven two. Why two eight seven two? Because he created the VLAN hundred. So hundred is added into the default priority. Whatever default priority they added. Okay. This port priority one twenty eight dot one. On every port, port priority is by default one twenty eight. And dot one is the port number. For example, like you have an interface fast Ethernet zero by one, so port priority will be one twenty eight dot one. If you have port number fast Ethernet zero by ten, so priority will be one twenty eight dot ten. You can change the root primary. Now port fast. Now, as I told you, spanning tree is running on every VLAN as well as on every port. So let's say on this switch, you connected a server. On zero by let's say ten. So when you connect the server, then this port, assume this server is sending me a BPDU. But server is not sending any kind of BPDU. BPDU is sent through switches only. So this port wait thirty second. Why thirty second? Listening to learning, learning to forwarding. Those thirty second. So port fast is used to discard STP. Thirty second. Port fast is used on end user ports. Port fast is always used on end users where you connect the computer, where you connect the servers. Switch to switch connectivity. Don't configure any port fast. Otherwise, there will be a chance of loop. So how to configure this thing? You have to go to the switch interface. And you can define spanning hyphen tree port fast. That's it. So port fast feature will be enabled on that particular port. So you can see this is the PC. If I connect this PC to any switch, so right now it's orange. So it take approximate thirty second to come up as a green. So right now STP process is running. So if you want to run. Show spanning tree. So it is not showing here because that is not connecting. Okay, not issue. We can verify like this way. 
So right now it take approximate 30 second. I am deleting this link. And after that, on that particular interface, interface fast Ethernet 0 by 3, spanning tree, port fast. I enable this command. So now if you connect to 0 by 3, so that port is automatically up. So it will not go this time listening to learning, learning to forwarding. So it will discard these 30 seconds. Next is BPDU guard. They are not showing pictures. Not sure. Let's say this is your network and this network is working fine. Here MAC address is AAA B C. This switch is the root bridge. All switches having the same priority 32768 32768 32768 BP do guard. BP do guard apply on and user port. If any superior BP do receive on BPDU guard enable port that port will go to error disable state that port will go to the error disable state so for example whenever we design a network when we are implementing a network then there is a blueprint. So in that blueprint, there is a information. Okay, port number zero by one to zero by one. I have to connect switch and rest of the port. I have to connect it and users. So let assume there is a interface. Previously, there is a PC connected, but there is a attacker. He connect one switch. And he changed the priority. So priority is here, let's say 4096. So when, if there is no BPDU guard, if there is no BPDU guard, then that, po that switch will become root bridge because of the lower priority. But if you configured BPDU guard here, And if it receive any BPDU, then this port will go to error disable state. Means that port will not work. And this BPDU will not go to the entire network. So no topology change.
so bpdu guard is protecting your network from unauthorized bpdu unauthorized superior bpdu how to implement this thing you have to go to the interface fast ethernet let's say 0 by 5 you can run a command spinning tree bpdu guard enable that's it so bpdu guard will be enable so bpdu guard characteristics if bpdu is received it shut down the port usually it is a combination with port fast why port fast because on that interface we are connecting end user so end user we are implementing port fast command so how to implement this thing interface spanning tree port fast spanning tree bpdu guard enable if you run this command spanning tree port fast bpdu guard default so what it will do it will identify okay on which port you enable the port fast command so it find it find like okay port number 2224 you configure port fast so it will enable bpdu guard only on those port where you enable the port fast command if you run this command spanning tree port fast default this command will enable port fast feature on every port so you can check the port is port fast enable or not show interface show running configuration interface and the interface name you can check with show spanning tree summary whatever spanning tree features are enable or not mm, this is the topology spanning tree failure consequences what will be happen if the network if switch d ergasly transition both both it ports will be into the forwarding state previously this port is into the block state if that port is again into the forwarding state so loop can form because at least one interface we require who is into the blocking state otherwise your loop will form like this so every packet every vlan will start sending packet on every link this is your spanning tree okay one more thing stp is basically 802.1d then we have rstp 802.1w mstp 802.1s these are the code stp total convergence time so 15 plus 15 listening to learning learning to forwarding then max age plus next bpdu 52 second a switch can take approximately 52 second okay in your box it is written 50 second but practically if you see it will take approximate 52 second if you see practically if you capture the packets okay then it take approximate 52 second no 50 second is a big time in production environment to synchronize the topology so in stp the problem is convergence time 
So then they develop a new protocol, which is RSTP. Rapid Spanning Tree. RSTP convergence time is 10 times less than STP, normal STP. So whatever task, topology synchronization, STP is doing into 50 seconds, he can do into 5 seconds. So RSTP is more faster. And how RSTP works? It uses the same three functionality. Election of root bridge. Election of root port. Election of designated port and block port. It uses the same functionality and same parameters. So by default mode is PVST. If you want to change mode PVST to RSTP, so you can run this command. Spining tree mode rapid PVST. So RSTP will be enabled. If you enable PVST mode PVST, so normal STP will be enabled. If you run MST, MSTP, so MSTP protocol will be enabled. Actually, MSTP is into the CCNP. Uh, let me give you an overview, MSTP. So let us assume you had these two switches. And On both the switches, VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 VLAN are there. Now, as you know, spanning tree is running on every VLAN. STP is running on every VLAN. So there will be separate spanning tree instance for every VLAN. So this switch have to remember the separate spanning tree database of every VLAN. So if it has to remember multiple spanning tree database, then it consume more memory and more CPU utilization. So what we can do, we can combine in MSTP, we can combine multiple
VLAN spanning tree database to a single instance. So in MSTP we can do this thing for VLAN 10, 20 and 30 there is a instance one. For 40, 50 and 60 instance two. So if switch is remember only instance one that means it is taking the database of information of VLAN 10, 20 and 30. So lesser the number of instances it will reduce the memory and CPU utilization basically. So MSTP is the protocol to combine multiple spanning tree database into a single spanning tree instance. Clear now? So this is all about spanning tree. Now try to do discovery number 18. Configuring root bridge and analyze the spanning tree topology. Verify this discovery. Next is Ether channel. So let's say we have these two switches and in these two switches I connected four links. So STP is running in this topology. So what STP will do? STP will make one link as a primary and rest of the link will be into the standby. So that means I'm unable to utilize the full bandwidth of the link. Only one link will be active at a time. Now ether channel is a technology or mechanism to combine multiple physical Ethernet links into a single logical link. So once you implement the Ether channel you can combine these four links into one logical link. 
so switch 1 and switch 2 will understand it's one logical link but physically they are four is this the same thing as port channeling yes port channel and ether channel is same thing maximum eight links can be bundled in a group So, when multiple links aggregate to the switch, congestion congestion can occurs. One solution is to increase uplink speed, but the solution cannot scale indefinitely. Another solution is to multiply uplink, but loop prevention mechanism disable on some ports. Okay. So in Ether channel. Logical aggregation of the link between the switches means you can combine multiple links between the switches. High bandwidth, your bandwidth will increase. So let's say if you connect two links with one one gig, so your total bandwidth will be two gig. Load sharing across the links. Now you can share the load on both the links. One logical port to the STP. If you are not making this link as a ether channel, so previously these two switches identify between switch one and switch two, there are two links. But now if you make ether channel, due to the ether channel or port channel, these two link will become one logical link. So switch one and switch two identify as a single logical link. So loop, there will be no loop. Redundancy, we have two links. If one link goes down, then no issue. We have another link. No loops, redundancy. Condition to form ether channel. First. Same media type. Cable must be same. It's not like that. One cable is uh, fast Ethernet and another cable is a fiber optic cable. Same speed. Same speed on the port. It's not like that. One port is 100 Mbps and one port is 1 gig. Same duplex setting. Duplex setting must be same on all the ports. Same native VLAN ID. Native VLAN ID must be same on both the switches. Same. 
नंबर ऑफ अलाउड वीलन सो दीज आर दाइव कंडीशन विच मस्ट बी मैच ऑन बोथ द स्विचेस इथर चॅनल प्रोटोकॉल इन इथर चॅनल वी हॅव टू प्रोटोकॉल वन इज पी ए जी पी एल ए सी पी पी ए जी पी इज पोर्ट एग्रीगेशन प्रोटोकॉल एल ए सी पी लिंक एग्रीगेशन कंट्रोल प्रोटोकॉल पी ए जी पी इज सिस्को प्रोपेटरी एल ए सी पी इज ओपन स्टँडर्ड PAGP modes in PAGP we have two mode one is auto and desirable in LACP we have again two mode one is active another one is passive in ether channel mode on is also there mode on means forcefully static ether channel if you define mode is on in that case there will be no pagp no lacp so let's say if you had switches if on one side the mode is on and on in that case ether channel will form if one side is on auto and desirable and another side is off off means on another side i haven't configure either channel in that case no channel if one side is auto and desirable and another side is desirable then channel form if one side is on or auto and another side is also auto no channel so you have to remember these combinations
if one side you have active passive and another side is off again no channel if one side is active or passive other side is active channel form if one side is on or passive and another side is also passive no channel now what do you mean by active and passive if you are making lscp so active ports will initiate the session and passive just respond in same way if you are using pagp then desirable port will initiate the session and auto just respond so ether channel protocol there are two protocol pagp and lscp lscp is open standard protocol and the standard is 802.1 802.3 ad the static ether channel can be configured without pagp and lscp with the help of mode own mode on no protocol we discuss all these things in pgp we have two modes desirable and auto so these are the combinations whatever we are discussing right now lscp active and passive these are the combinations configuring the ether channel means these condition must be match speed and duplex setting mode trunk link native and allowed vlan must be same access vlan on the access ports so these condition must be match ether channel can be a layer 2 or can be layer 3 so in this example they are going to sh show you on switch 1 and switch 2 0 by 1 and 0 by 2 are on switch number 1 so what you have to do you have to go to the interface range fast ethernet 0 by 1 or 2 then you have to define channel group you can take any mode any channel group number 1 2 3 4 5 any number then mode active mode active means they are using lscp protocol exit after that whatever port channel number you are using you are using same port channel number interface port channel number and inside that you have to define the command for example like switch port mode trunk switch port allowed vlan and whatever vlan you want to allowed same type of configuration you have to do on the switch number 2 so this is the layer 2 ether channel if you run show interface status you will get like okay the links are trunk to verify port channel there is a command show interface port channel uh, ether channel summary show interface port channel 1 show ether channel summary so it will give you all the information okay your channel is layer 2 or layer 3 or which protocol is used so they are not showing here layer 3 configuration
so layer 2 configuration is there i am writing layer 3 configuration so let us assume we have these two switches layer 3 switch let's say this is 3550 3550 and you want make layer 3 ether channel now so for layer 3 interface range fast ethernet 0 by 1 2 your first command will be no switch port after that channel hyphen group any group number mode let's say active active means i am using lacp no shut and exit after that this is the step number 1 interface port hyphen channel 1 inside that you have to define again no switch port and there you can define like ip address let's say 10.0.0.1 and the subnet mask if you want to configure here switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1q you can run that command then switch port can you have a trunk on a port that's not a switch port sorry if it, if it's not a switch port can you have a trunk there I it's a new a it's a new uh, no switch port means i am creating layer 3 port now switch port mode trunk so these are the these two commands are optional because in the layer 3 we have to just verify the connectivity so on one switch you can assign 10.0.0.1 and on this side you can define 10.0.2 okay and after that you have to ping if your ping is successful in that case your port channel layer 3 port channel is done to verify show ether channel summary okay so that will be the configuration so you have a lab activity discovery number 20 so try to do this lab
Yes, anyone complete this uh, ether channel configuration? Yeah, I'm done. Have you got any issue? Here, let me check real quick. So check show ether channel I somebody. Another question. Sorry? Go, go ahead. I, were you talking to the whole class? Okay. I just I have a question regarding my um my lab. I need to share my screen to even show you. Sure. So share your screen. Well, somehow, can you see it? <laughs> yes. Okay, somehow I forgot to do the trunk, which I'm, you know, I'm not, I haven't mastered yet, but if you can see on the lab, the first show interface is status is meant to have um, my port channel as a trunk VLAN. But in, but in reality, if you look at it, Okay, trunk and um, it is showing. I'm on inside. Okay, so what is the issue? Uh, you go to the uh, config mode. On switch three, go to the config mode. Okay. Interface port channel one. Say that again. Enable port channel one. Interface port channel one. Define here switch port mode trunk. Now that wasn't a step. Is that something that I was meant to do up here? With that note issue, you just enter the command and we'll see that thing. Okay. okay. So uh, it is giving error message. So okay. error message is your command is rejected. So firstly run this command, switch port trunk. Remove this and run the command switch port trunk. Switch port trunk. Space encapsulation dot one Q enter and now run switch port mode trunk and do the same thing on the switch number one. Interface port channel one. First run here, switch port command. Run here only switch port. Because your port is showing routed. Uh, switch port. Okay. Okay, yeah, this is more of practice. I guess I'm not fully entertaining the concept, but as you can see, well, I will. <laughs> Before I take the test, though. So, no, we no. wanted it to be trunk. I mean, huh. switch port, enter, 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 enter. First, enter, switch port, and enter. Now, run switch port, trunk encapsulation. Switch port. Trunk encapsulation dot one Q switch port mode trunk. That's it. Now check switch port uh, exit from there. Uh, exit from there. 
Show interface. Is that what you said? Show interface is brief. That was the different. The other one. Show. No, run here. Show ether channel summary. We'll see your port channel is created or not. Show ether channel summary. Okay. So it is showing right now. There is no protocol and there is no port. Okay. So do one thing. Go. To, you are on switch number. Okay. Just show me your diagram. Where is your picture uh, diagram of the switch connectivity? How the switches are connected? Okay. You are connecting switch one and switch three. Okay. Uh, you are on switch number one right now. Okay. On switch number one, go to the config T. Switch number one. Yes, config T. Interface range. Fast Ethernet zero byte. Uh, Ethernet zero byte two hyphen three. Shut down. After that, channel group. Channel group one mode active. No shutdown. And now go to the switch number three. Why do you put no shutdown? It, it doesn't tell you to put that in here. But is that important to know? See, they are doing shutdown here in the step number seven. Mm hmm. Oh, you mean four right here? Okay. They told it. Well, don't worry about it. Then. They didn't say put. You know, then they put. Say. Um, so firstly, sign. they are putting shutdown because uh, in the lab they are using the virtual switches. These are not hardware switches. They are using a simulator like your packet tracer. Okay, so in that packet tracer, in the background, maybe there are some services are running. So due to that reason, they are blocking everything first, and they are implementing one by one service. So switch one configuration is done. Now go to the switch number three. Exit from there. Now go to the interface range Ethernet zero by two hyphen three. Shut down. Channel group one mode passive. Mode passive, passive, passive. Oh. No shut, no shut down. Exit from there. Exit from there. Now run show ether channel summary. you are getting the same kind of issue okay your port is in suspended mode right now okay once again try show ether channel summary you can see your ether channel is created and it's showing your protocol is lacp and it is showing in that port channel there are two ports right so your configuration is done perfectly
Yeah. And this one, the S, what does the S mean? Yeah. Suspended. And then for, okay. That's where you got the suspended status from the S here. Right. Suspended means at that time, we just enable the no shutdown and our neighboring switch is sending me uh, this LACP packet and I'm not accepting those packet because my port is shut down. So that's why the negotiation is not happening. So once the port is up, so my port channel is up. So once the port channel is up, your Ethan, Ether channel summary is showing the correct result. Okay. 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 Now let's see if I can tie that back into my lab here, but you guys can move on if you want to. <laughs> okay. So this <laughs> is the ether channel lab. Thank you. So everyone complete this lab. Anyone who is good here getting issues in ether channel. I'm good. I was having something similar, but I did the shut down the interfaces and then it came up after that. So I think it might be the virtual thing. Yes. So we are closing uh, this class here. Tomorrow again, we have to do some switching task and then we'll do uh, after HSRP. Then we'll do switch port security. Then we'll do DHCP. Then we'll do syslog server. After syslog server, we'll see uh, GRE tunnel, how the GRE tunnel will form. And then we'll discuss the rest of the troubleshooting which is coming into the exam. For example, like there is a GRE uh, troubleshooting is there. So we have to see that thing. So tomorrow I will try to complete uh, all the simulation which is coming in the exam. Okay, so lab prospective uh, exam is done, all the labs. Then we have to discuss about some questions, multiple choice questions. Okay. So uh, tomorrow I will try to complete approximate let's see like 50 or 100 questions we'll discuss okay so that on the last day we'll try to complete everything i did have one question on lab 23 it was a dhcp one dhcp will discuss tomorrow okay okay in dhcp we have to discuss how to configure dhcp on routers and then oh. we have to discuss what is the dhcp relay agent okay so there's one about a helper address in there i wasn't sure yeah. what that was no helper address is used. Let's say DHCP is used for providing the IP address to the client. But let's say you want to implement a centralized DHCP server. And that centralized DHCP server is in some remote location. By default, your router will not forward your DHCP offer packet to that server because that DHCP offer is a broadcast. And we discuss all the broadcast packet to the router will simply drop. So DHCP helper address is used to allow that DHCP offer packet to that DHCP server. So we'll discuss and we'll do this lab tomorrow. Thank you very much, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, have a good, good night. night. Hey, good night. Good morning. Morning. Is it really three o'clock in the morning over there where you're at or is your clock just set different? Uh, it's different. Oh, okay.